Welcome to Nugget 162, and we have a very special guest today, and his name is John. And when I found out about him from his wonderful daughter, I knew I wanted to interview him. Tell us a little bit about what you did and where you worked. I worked for the Geological Survey, making topographic maps for 26 years. Before I got on the survey, I was brought up on a dairy farm. I didn't like milking cows. <laughs> <laughs> From there, I went in the Air Force for four years, and then when I got out, that started my career with a geological survey. From there, we had 41 moves with it, I guess. Along the way, we had different projects where I did different uh, mapping. Some of it was field completion. Some of it was photo control. Some of it was running elevations. And I had a lot of experiences along the way. Well, that's what we want to talk about today, <laughs> are some of those experiences and some of the wonderful places that yeah. you worked. Well, when we were mapping the Everglades, we hired a private helicopter outfit to take us over the Everglades for reconnaissance. While he was up there, he says, he says I'm running low on for gas. I'm going to have to head back. So he brings it back and puts the helicopter down at a gas station <laughs> out on Tamiami Trail. Oh, that's funny. So then we go back and do some more reconnaissance. And then after that, we had the Air Force out of Homestead, Florida, taking us over the Everglades. At one time, we had a, a buggy taking us out into the swamp. And we also had the park service with the airboats taking us out into the swamp. What We're, was the, we the purpose were, of the surveying of the Everglades? To determine the size or the uh, condition or what? Basically, we did run a few elevations out in there. Uh, we used water level from where we start where, and we'd go on out and you'd just continue using water level. And basically, it was classification. We had more classifications in the Everglades. We had hammocks, we had sawgrass, we had swamp, we had submerged swamp, and we had all this we had to contend with. And was the baseline always water level? No, it wasn't really necessarily based on water level. I guess that changed, though. Wouldn't, would the water level the, change much? Or it no? does change. As you get closer to the, to the gulf, to, it changes. And then one time, uh, we were flagging a station, a marker, you know, uh, and it was at a fire tower. And it had a moat around it, and there was about seven alligators in this moat around. This, oh boy! Around this. and this was in the Everglades still. <laughs> yeah, this is still in the Everglades. We were watching them. They they stayed in the moat, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had to go back and check the station that we uh, panel because we make an X over the station. And then when they fly to do the photographs, it's supposed to pick it up on the photograph. We went back, and that panel was gone. Oh, and no. alligators got up there and tore, <laughs> tore that all apart. We had to repanel it. That's and, funny. Yeah. And what year was this? It was in the seventies when we, we were at Homestead. We were at Homestead. Okay. So early seventies. We love going to the Everglades. It's beautiful. It is. It's a beautiful place in the winter. It's not yeah. so great in the summer. Yeah. All the birds and the baby alligators and all that. And How far would y'all shoot a line between each other, whatever, however you do that? Uh, when we were just running roads, it depended a lot on the, the sun and the heat waves, but you could shoot a thousand feet with an alidade to run our basic elevations. And if it was real hot and the, and the heat waves were real bad, you had to cut back on them. So that determined? It determines what from what the weather, what it amounts to, yeah. When we worked around the Okefenokee Swamp, the Army... In the Okefenokee Swamp, that's, that, that's in Alabama, in, Georgia no, area it's in, border? That's in Georgia and a little tiny bit in Florida, North Florida. Okay. But it's basically in Georgia. We had the Army come in and put Bilby Towers. There were temporary towers all around the perimeter of the swamp. We would have to climb these Bilby Towers. We had a helicopter with a blinking light on it. He had a plumb bob that he let down the string from it to the level of the swamp and we would shoot angles off we'd have guys on all these towers and we'd be shooting angles to the helicopter and that's the way they determined the elevation wow so he from, was just hovering yeah he'd hover over different spots where we wanted him oh, that's to go. amazing were you a professional at swamp surveys or did it just happen <laughs> that way i mean 
I, Everglades and Okefenokee. I mean, that, those are two famous swamps in the southeast. Yeah. And they, how did you get so fortunate to get those jobs? They, oh, you had the they, best they, rubber boots. They, they, tell you, they tell you where to go, uh, the <laughs> yeah. office. You don't have a lot of choice. Uh, okay. That sounds fun. I know that when we originally were talking before the interview, you said that you were in the Army at Fort Drum, and then you were looking No, I wasn't. At, I worked at Fort oh, Drum you worked after okay. I, I worked on a survey for the new— they put in a new part of the base there, and the company I was working with at Fort Drum uh, had the contract to do the layout the roads. When that got done, my job got done. This is where you started with the USGS? Well, yeah, I started uh, on the training program, and they okay. started a training program in Watertown. We started mapping right outside between, you know, down there by Henderson, in that area. That's where they had us. And farmers used to get so sick of us because there was like 30-some of us training. <laughs> and, and we'd go over the same area oh, okay. all the time. It so was, you did that for a year? And no, then your... training was only like three months. They put me out on my own. and Well, I wasn't really on my own. I was under supervision. I want to ask you something really personal. Do you remember how much you were paid? Oh, yeah. How much? 3250 a year. A year. A year, yeah. But Most we people were, are thinking, boy, I made thirty two fifty a month, but no, you made that a year. But we got travel. Uh, we were on per dime all the time, Okay. seven days a week. That was the only thing that counted because it wasn't taxable. Okay, that helped, right? <laughs> you left Watertown, and where did where was your first assignment? It was down in uh, Dade City, Florida, and we were mapping the area of uh, the Green Swamp. Here you go, another swap. <laughs> That's where you started, right? Yeah. And I had a little town on my sheet. It was called Lacucci, Florida. It was an old, it was kind of like in the Adirondacks, they had mill towns. Yes. And this Lacucci was like a mill town because there was a lot of cypress uh, swamps in the area. And, and, cypress is, and cypress is probably the best wood in the world, I think. The trees, they claim it takes 500 years to grow a big tree. Wow. The people that were doing this, they put narrow gauge railroad into the swamps. They would cut down the, the cypress, and this Lacucci was where the people was working. They were put up there, but when I, when I got there, it was gone. It was more or less a ghost town. There, there was very few people living in this little town. You've been to three swamps. Did you go anywhere? Did you do any dry <laughs> land surveying? <laughs> yeah, did a lot of, yeah, I, did, I did a lot of mountain surveying, okay, too. Okay, now let's go from top to bottom, bottom to top, right? Well, I, I worked in the Adirondacks all over. We were mapping the Adirondacks for the 76 Olympics. Was that one near Lake Placid? Is that when the Olympics were in Lake Placid? or was the Yeah, ones? it was near Lake Placid. I was living in uh, Tupper Lake at that time. I was working on that side of the mountains. Was it mapped at all prior to that? As far yeah. as you guys, you just had to redo it. Yes, a lot of that was done on fifteen-minute maps. Okay. And see, they wanted to get the whole country mapped on seven and a half minute. Can you please explain uh, well, to non-geographers what a fifteen-minute and a seven-and-a-half-minute well, map means? It's according to latitude and longitude. Okay. Seven and a half minutes latitude and seven and a half minutes longitude. And the 15-minute ones worked the same way, only you had actually a smaller map, but it covered more area, the 15-minute. It was map. a bigger grid. Yeah. Versus they wanted a tighter grid. Yeah. They wanted more detail? More detail. Right. Okay. Like when I was doing photo control, we used aerial photographs. We had to travel every road, put on every building, every church, every cemetery, every post office, every town, every boundary. How many people are on your crew? Because this is a lot of work. There was only probably five or six of us come into it. And then later on, I had projects. I was all alone on some projects, well, working myself. And then sometimes there'd be two of us working. And they were good to me. They promoted me right on up as far as I could go because I only had a high school education, and you could only go so far without college. Did you enjoy this? Oh, I loved it. I bet you did. Yeah, I loved it. I bet you did. <laughs> but uh, moving 41 times was probably tough for a family. It was tough. I think it was tough on her and tough on the kids. I loved the work. 
Well, why don't we let the missus tell us a little bit about the personal <laughs> side? Actually, our oldest one started was started in kindergarten when he first got on the USGS. All of them started moving from the beginning. It wasn't like I had to move when I was in fourth grade and thought it was terrible. <laughs> But they never knew anything different, and when it was time to move, we'd get the maps out to see where we were going next. That's cool. Well, so. it's kind of like our son. He lived on the road. <laughs> he moved every week. Oh, yeah. So we moved more than 41 times. We you got did. you beat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. Yeah. It was, we had a good time. We met a lot of nice people. And we've met a lot of nice people, too. And I think this is a good place for us to break, don't you think? And we will pick up in Nugget 163 with the continuation of our Nugget series on the USGS, and specifically with our interview with John. Thank you. <laughs> 